welcome back to the channel. We are here yet again with our 1995 Ford Escort station wagon. If this is your first time stopping in the channel, there's a playlist for this car, which I will link right up there, as well as right down in the description for you. The goal of today's video is gonna to be to replace both axle shafts and service the transmission oil. Oh, and this is a five-speed manual transmission car, so no funny automatic transmission business around here. And you may be thinking to yourself, Hey Max, that seems like an oddly specific combination of things to do at the same time. And you would be right, and there's a reason for that. The complete masochists at Ford didn't provide this car with an actual fill plug. What they did instead, which is why you see my magnet on a stick poking out there, is they decided to have you pull the vehicle speed sensor out of the top of the transmission, and that has like a little dipstick built into it, I guess. And that's actually the fill port. Well, that would be fine, but it's held in with like one 10 millimeter bolt. Uh, the first thing that's going to happen if you try and do that is that bolt's going to break off. The next thing that's going to happen when you try and get the VSS out is you're going to break the VSS in half because it's going to be seized into the transaxle. And then after that, you're running probably a 50% chance of the half that stayed there, pieces of it falling into the transmission. So Ford's expectation is that you get way down there and it doesn't even matter if you can't see it, but just trust me, at the end of that stick is the VSS go through that whole nightmare and just cross your fingers hoping for the best. And what I've found on these cars is that when, you know, when I get them, they're 20 plus years old. So even if they're low mileage, like I think this thing's got like 85,000 miles on it right now, all the rubber parts are really old anyway. So the axle shaft boots on this car, I think are still intact, but they're all dry rotted. They're going to split out at any minute and sling all the grease out and all that crap. And yes, you can replace just the boots and you can rebuild the half shafts and all that. And I've looked into it and on these cars, that's about half the price of just buying rebuilt shafts and the shafts are super cheap and the auto zone ones are just fine. Like I can document about 150 to 200,000 miles on auto zone half shafts across the other two cars. And they're like 50, 60 bucks a piece. In fact, I think they owe me a core on them still. Bought them years ago and they've been waiting. So what I do is I get the axle shafts out and replaced, but I leave the last one out. That's when I drain the transmission oil and I fill it up through the axle hole in the side of the transmission. Now these cars have something like a, I don't know, like a four pint capacity or something like that. We'll, we'll double check that before we do it. So I just measure out that much oil, make sure that's what I pump into it, put the axle back in, I'm good to go. I can pretty much promise you the first Escort that I changed the manual transmission fluid on was the first time it had ever been done. I've never seen uh, ATF look that bad. And that was at like 145,000 miles on that car. And it shifted just fine uh, all the way until the day that the crusher gave it the old claw and made it into soup cans. It drove on and off the trailer. Uh, rust killed that car, FYI. So this sounds like a huge amount of work just to change the transmission oil. And it is, but I'm looking at it as if you have one of these cars, odds are good no one's ever done it before. And if you do it one time, that's probably good for the rest of the life of the car. With all that said, I am going to try and invent a method to allow me to do this all from the bottom in the future. So I can drain it and fill it just from the drain plug. Anyway, there's a long story of why this oddly specific series of events goes with itself because you do not want to screw with that VSS. And the only other easy way to get oil in the transmission is to jack the car up to one side and pour it in the axle hole. You'll notice there's some non sequiturs here, meaning that some work has already been done. Basically what I've done here is I've just taken the brake caliper off because I'm replacing mine. If you were planning to keep yours, you're going to want to get a bucket or something to put down here to put it on. In fact, a five gallon bucket upside down scoots in here almost perfectly for that job. And you're not going to want to wire it up to the strut or anything because this is all going to be flopping around here in a few minutes. So it's better just to swing it on out of the way. To get the caliper off, there are two 14 millimeter head pins that just come out and off she goes, no big deal. Our next step is gonna to be to remove the disc, which I just put a lug nut back on mine so it didn't run away while I was prying on the caliper. And it should just come right off of there. And on my car, that reveals a disc that is in just horrific condition, but it frees up the space we need to get on that axle nut. Maybe we could have got on it before, but maybe not. And now it's time for one of the moments of truth of this project. There are two jobs on this car, which are the entire reason I own this particular impact gun. It's an IR uh, 2235 Ti. Time I bought it, this was one of the most powerful impact guns on the market. I would say at least in the top five. This thing's a pretty big brute. These axle nuts are a nightmare to get off, or at least it can be. The first time I did one of these, I actually ended up taking my angle grinder and grinding the nut and the end of the half shaft down to like almost the halfway point before I could get on it with a punch and a hammer 
and start unscrewing it that way. It was so corroded and on there so tight. There is a little divot here on this axle just happens to be pointing up at the moment where this nut is punched down into it to act as a mechanical lock so that nut can't come off later. So we can get a little screwdriver and pop that guy up, but it's probably not really gonna make any difference. Basically, if you don't have a pretty gnarly impact gun to use, you are gonna be up the creek. Uh, like I said, if that won't work for you, you can go down to Harbor Freight and spend, I don't know, $15 on an angle grinder. Literally one of these homies right here. And just have at her until you get there. Uh, for your core, I just put some grease over it. Nobody ever asked. Speaking of, I'm kind of excited about the core charges that might be coming back to me that I'd forgotten about years ago. I know AutoZone will give them back years after the fact because I've already done it. I think we're going to get on it with Mr. Beefy here and it's going to come off. Uh, FYI, this is 32 millimeter, which is also the exact same thing as one and a quarter, which is what I got here. I do have it in neutral right now. I don't know if putting in gear will do me any good or not. I may end up having to put the wheel back on it and put it back on the ground to get this to break loose. Wasn't even thinking about it before. It'll piss me off if it comes to it. But anyway, it's in first. I don't think it's going to make a difference, but we'll see. Let's try something mildly different. <laughs> Probably not going to do me any good either. So it actually did turn the nut until I stopped it, so... I think it was wrong about whether or not that was going to help. Maybe I just want a regular old grip punch. Am I making this hard on myself? I believe so. All right, let's try the impact again. Oh yeah. All right, nice and rusty. And your new half shafts should come with new nuts. If they don't for some reason, make sure you buy them. Specifically because once that feature has been made, you don't want to reuse it. For me, just for safekeeping for the time being, I'm just going to put it on there like a thread and a half. Just realized I accidentally catfished you. The other job I need this gun for on this car is the water pump and timing belt. Uh, I had absolutely no luck with anything but this particular impact. I tried a couple. Nothing worked. Now for your next move, you kind of have a choice of actions. I have already done this where I just took the ball joint off on the bottom and then swung the whole strut and hub assembly off of the axle. You can do that, but it's not all that convenient. The advantage of doing that is that taking it apart and putting it back together that way doesn't affect your alignment because you're not moving the strut. Odds are pretty good that unbolting it right here isn't going to change your strut alignment anyway unless you have some wear condition where you have cam bolts in here already, which are just bolts with an eccentric on it that will push the strut away from the spindle or the hub and correct the camber condition. You can see we got none of that going on here. We've got whatever it was born with. And also a good time to mention, I always replace this strut hardware when I'm in here because as you can see, this stuff's just total garbage by now. So you have your choice of actions. For me, it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna replace this whole strut assembly anyway, so this stuff needs to go. And then I can have better visibility on the ball joint on the bottom once all this crap's out of my way. So that's how I'm gonna do it. Also gonna go back with the trusty IR, uh, 17 millimeter on both sides, and hopefully she just busts right off. The inside of that bolt actually looks remarkably clean. Yeah, I can't believe that wasn't rusted in there. Look at that thing. Plating on it's even still nice. So if I needed to, I actually would reuse these, but I don't need to because I've got a whole ton of new ones. Second verse, same as the first. Come on, meow. That nut's a little worse for wear. Come on. There we go. There we go. Come on. Yeah, same story. It's actually pretty nice on the inside. So we just lost some caliper hardware that we may or may not have to replace. I would imagine we got new ones of those, but. So our strut and our hub are now free to roam from each other. Yep. So the only thing holding the spindle on now is the ball joint at the bottom. Oh, and we're really lucky. Our half shaft is loose in the hub. The splines aren't seized up, which is awesome news. Take that nut back off. I believe we can just kajigger this guy on through. Oh, yeah, the tie rod end is back here still holding it, which I had forgotten about. But it is awesome news that that is not rusted fast in there. She's being nice to me. Got a feeling the days of that happening are coming to an end, because what we have to do next really sucks. As not part of this video, I'm actually replacing all the steering, too. So that tie rod end, the inner, and of course the other side, that's all going to go away. And once I do that, it'll be a lot easier to remove this axle. As I said, I have already done this before. I'm pretty sure just with uh, cranking the wheel and taking the ball joint out of the bottom to do it. But since I'm getting rid of all this stuff anyway, that is my next move. You can do it however you want. All right, let's see if we got enough play in the knuckle to 
get it off of the half shaft now. Sort of doubt it, but it'd be cool if we did. Maybe. Oh, almost. Come on, baby. Come on. There we go. All right. Got the half shaft out of the knuckle. Cool. Now it's out. I think I may have a bad wheel bearing up here. Yeah, she got some slop in her. Yeah, that super sucks because these are hard to service. You got to press the bearings in and out. Yeah, that guy's roached. Way too much movement in him. Should absolutely not be able to move it enough to click it like that. Well, poo. Well, since I have no other options anyway, I'm going to compare that to the other side when I get there, but I got a feeling this guy's bad. If that's the case, I'll have to tear all this crap back off again later because I don't have a press to do these. Never had one fail before either. First time for everything. This could be really exciting or really boring. I have a fun way of removing these if I need to. Uh, sometimes you just grab them and pull and they'll come out. That one just split right in half. So that's not what I wanted. By the way there, that's why I did move the drain pan. Again, I'm not reusing these, so I don't care. We'll also say that grease looks a lot like it had some water in it. So I think that boot was already failing. All right, so looks like we're gonna do this the fun way. There is a Ford specific tool to do this, but I found a way to do it without that tool. Both of them require a slide hammer. So if you don't have a slide hammer, you're kind of out of luck. So there's the stub on up in there. And the problem we have is there's nowhere to get any leverage around that thing to like pry on it and pop it out. So there's a Ford tool that's like a really, really thin hook that can actually get behind it. But there's only a very small amount of room between that thing and the transmission. And that thing is on an angle. It's like made on an angle. So it's a real nightmare to try and pry out of there. I came up with the method I'm about to show you out of desperation one day. And I was completely surprised at how well it worked. Hopefully it's going to work a few more times for me. What I've got here is, I don't know, 20 or 30 feet of 12 gauge solid core copper wire. Uh, this is basically the stuff you would wire your house with if you were putting your house wiring inside of conduit, uh, except a lot of the time that stuff will be stranded, not solid. This stuff is actually strong enough and thin enough that the insulation on it will actually carry the load of slide hammer and that thing out of the axle. So I'm gonna weasel around in there and get several wraps of this stuff around that axle shaft. And we'll come out here and make a loop I can get on with the slide hammer and then it should just pop it right out of there. That's the plan anyway. So I started thinking things through and I thought, why am I still using and illustrating a method that although does work, and I promise you it does, I believe I've done it this way twice. Why would I show you the most desperate thing I could come up with? Uh, especially when it's giving me a hard time now, because of course it is, the camera loves to make me a liar. So I started looking around for better ways to do this. And one of those ways I discovered is that on Amazon, you can get an adapter that threads on to your slide hammer on one end and on the other end replaces the lock nut in your pair of vice grips. So then you can have vice grip slide hammers. And like, that is a genius idea. So I came out to my slide hammer kit and started rooting through it, trying to determine what thread size I had to make sure the adapter would be compatible. And I go over to my kit, which is the Maddox kit from Harbor Freight, and see that it included this thing and I'm just too dumb to know what it was. I think on Amazon, just this thing from OTC or whoever it was is like 25 bucks. Regular price in the entire Maddox kit is 80. <laughs> and you haven't seen it on the channel much yet, but I have beat the crap out of that slide hammer set and it's going strong. It's a great tool. So we'll definitely be talking more about that later. But for right now, I believe what we're gonna do is thread this guy on the slide hammer and use the better tool that I've owned for the last probably four years and didn't have any idea how it worked or what it was for. Let's get this guy on out of there and get it replaced with this guy. Get it threaded onto the slide hammer and get it all clamped onto that guy and give her a couple whacks. And I bet she just jumps right out of there. But watch, since I'm the world's biggest idiot, it won't. It'll make me a liar again. Also worth mentioning while I'm doing this that I do have some off-brand vice grips. I think some... I think some Husky and some Tecton, you know, just cheap junk ones. Uh, the thread in them is not correct for this adapter. Uh, they need to be actual Irwin Vice Grip brand. I think they're 7 16 thread. So if you've got this on your mind, make sure you've got the, the real deal or equivalent. But anyway, there's the idea of how it works. And it just adjusts the vice grips as usual. I think we're going to want them adjusted pretty dang tight. Uh, one thing I should add before we continue much further, because I'm probably going to cut the part of the video where it happened, is that plastic drive cup thing used to be on the stub shaft that's still in transmission right now. And I slide hammered that off almost by accident. I thought it was something that would be more robust than it was. So you'll want to pop that off your axle stub 
before you clamp vice grips to it. Otherwise, you'll just be clamping them on to plastic. And what I want to do is clamp it on to uh, probably aluminum. Let's get to it and hope for the best here. That's too loose. <laughs> uh, see about half a turn there. That's way too loose. Am I doing it wrong? Yeah. Okay, that's on there pretty good. Uh, let's hope for the best here. <laughs> First freaking try. Uh, all right, awesome. Oh, and a bunch of transmission fluids pouring out, which is not what I wanted. So we're not quite ready for that yet. I'll also add, it's a bunch of transmission fluid that looks like complete garbage. I think I mentioned earlier in the video that I've seen it before where it looks like coffee. There you go. The camera's not lying. It really does look that bad. So anyway, good thing we got the drain pan under there. But clearly I'm very happy that this went the way it did. That is freaking A awesome. Yeah, and I never even thought about anything like this because before I was renting the like the AutoZone slide hammer kits and I don't know if they have that attachment in them or not. It wouldn't surprise me if they do and I was just too dumb to know it then too. I'm very happy with how that went, that was awesome. But their retaining clip there, if you even wanna call it that, does not give me a lot of confidence. It's like a piece of wire that's shoved in there that doesn't even fit very well. Let's see if we can harvest the one off of our old boy because we know he fits tight. And this is also a completely ill-fitting piece of wire. So yeah, okay then. I guess we'll just roll with it. I thought they were a little more robust than that, but I guess not. Fast forward to two weeks from now when my transmission's fried because that freaking clip fell off. Sometimes these can be kind of fun to get started. The big thing I want to do is just try and be kind to that seal if I can. I think she just jumped right in, no, no problem. Ooh, I do want to anti-seize that. Yeah, I would not do my plan any good whatsoever to not remember to anti-seize these splines. Let's see if we can... Oh, yeah. Did that just go really nicely for me? Let's hope. Okay, well, it's engaged. It's got to get the nut started just so that doesn't fall apart overnight. Feels good. Not so sure about that. I guess it would have to have some flexibility. So what I'm kind of fretting over is this motion here. That just seems weird to me. But I guess the other half of the old one, that drive cup is like that deep. So the whole thing can slide in there to accommodate that motion. So I guess that's probably fine. This, I don't do that many of these, so it's been a while. It also feels completely fine. It feels good, so. All right. And of course, do remember to torque your axle nuts. I torqued mine to 225, and then I just staked the bejesus out of them. I don't think they're coming off. 225 might be a challenge for some of you guys. I've also had the issue in the past where I would actually start turning the wheel against the ground without having somebody to hold the brakes down. Fortunately for me, I didn't have that problem this time, so good to go. The problem I did have was forgetting to record an end to this video. Because there was so much going on and because there were so many like non sequiturs in the content, like I ended up needing to do a wheel bearing, I rebuilt all the steering, I rebuilt all the brakes. I did, I did that all at the same time, but that video would be 12 hours long. So as I chunk up the footage later, I'm noticing small things like, hey, I never actually said, that's it. So that's it if you have any questions like what torque specs for steering parts and stuff like that check out the playlist for the steering video and i'll go into more detail on that or if there's not a video about something that you are curious about that should be part of this repair it will be in the playlist shortly so thanks for stopping in guys really appreciate it we will catch you on the next one I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.